In this tutorial, I'm going to give a overview of the document object model as it relates to HTML and JavaScript. And I'll probably go kind of fast here at times, but I'll have some reading that I reference. So definitely, you'll, you'll want to um, go through and do the reading that I suggest and uh, get more and have a more in-depth look at it. Okay, so the document object model is going to be what um, what gives access to all the elements on a web page. And by elements, what I mean is the HTML elements such as uh, P for paragraph or um, bold, um, and actually the body tag itself and the head tag. And everything on a web page or within the browser is going to be um, part of that document object model. And inside the browser, the whole web page, like I said, the paragraphs, the forms, the tables, they're all going to be re represented in an object hierarchy. Now, if you've done a little bit of JavaScript and HTML, then you've probably seen the graphs in various books or online that represent the, doc the document object model. And you may think that you already know quite a bit about it, and you may, but go ahead and hang with me for a little bit here, and uh, we'll go over this, and we'll eventually see some various ways to uh, modify the elements within the document object model by using JavaScript. So the document object model, as it says here um, in this quote from the W3, it's actually a platform, and it's a language-neutral interface that allows programs and scripts to dynamically access and update the content. So that's important, because the document object model is an API. And that's developed by the W3C. Okay, so it's not a uh, it's not a theory. It's actually um, uh, part of a, a a platform. So just a little bit about the DOM history. Um, the DOM history uh, it really started off as a W3C recommendation in 1998, quite a while ago now. And then the recommendation for DOM level two was the year 2000. Uh, we still see even now, probably, uh, some instances where DOM level 1 is being used uh, by browsers more often than DOM level 2. But uh, especially with HTML5 coming in, uh, you should be able to use in most current browsers uh, the DOM level 2 specifications. So the reason why these were uh, developed, this, the recommendation for the DOM, was in response to uh, browsers such as um, Mozilla or IE, um, Firefox, uh, developing their own document object model and having the HTML or dynamic HTML working specifically with their browser as opposed to uh, cross-platform browsers. So uh, the, this, this was de developed in response to that. And actually, just as a side note, uh, DHTML refers to dynamic HTML, and it's actually been around for quite a while. You'll find uh, resources on DHTML that date back to the late 90s. Um, DOM graphical representation uh, in, in here, this, uh, this image from, w, from w3.org. This just gives a graphical uh, representation of a table. And within this table code, uh, if you've seen the HTML for a table before, you'll know that it starts with the opening tag of table, and then it's going to have a closing tag of table. And then inside that, we'll have nested such things as the t-body, the tr, and the td. So in this case, within this representation, we have several nodes. We, well, more than several. We have um, this image of the nodes. And this node here is going to be, uh, in this instance, our parent node. Okay. So this first node, the top one, is referred to as the parent node. Um, on this particular image, it's our root node. But on a actual web page, um, it probably wouldn't be the root node because usually the HTML element is our root node. Okay, so this is going to be our parent node in this case. Well, this parent node of table has a child. Okay, so this is going to be very, very uh, much like a like a family where we have children and siblings. So this first child is called T body. It's just a tag that goes within the table. Okay, the T body also has children. This is the first child of T-body, it's a TR. This is going to be the last child of T-body. And again, it's a TR. And it's the last child is it's coming next. It's coming after the first TR. And th these TRs contain their own children. Okay, so what's the parent of TR? The parent of TR is T-body. All right. 
So let's take a look at what nodes are, because I've been using the word no node. And you're going to see the word node used a lot uh, when we're talking about um, things like technology. Um, a node is, as it says here in networking, a node is a connection point. Okay? And it's either a redistribution point, or it can be an endpoint, or it could be a start point. Okay? And this is from Wikipedia. So these are kind of nodes, really. These people are nodes, and these people are spreading information. Uh, they're gossiping. This is a famous Norman Rockwell illustration. And each person is an example of an analog node, and they're talking to each other. Okay, More nodes. Okay, Now, this is just kind of a playful example, of course, because normally nodes are going to be connected to each other in some way. But uh, you see we have some images of old-style phones for communication. Those, uh, in an abstract way, can be nodes. Even more nodes. Okay, so as I mentioned before, that word node is used a lot in networking, programming, mapping, cognitive studies. It's used a lot. So uh, even in animation, such as uh, Maya. Maya is an is a animation tool, a program for creating um, a lot of the animations that you see in movies. So this is actually a screenshot from the Maya program. This is one of the things that you can do to add um, surfaces and textures. And you set this up, and these are all nodes to basically describe how the textures and surfaces of your object is, is going to look. So here's the object. This is a picture. It looks like a monkey. And it has, um, has a certain skin color and skin texture. Um, and it's going to be either glossy or, or maybe a hard edge surface. But that's all built up because of the way that these nodes are talking to each other. Okay, so nodes in HTML. Well, nodes in HTML are similar in that you have a element, and then the element is communicating or setting up the process for the rest of the elements that it contains. So as I mentioned, the DOM is a programming API for documents. It's based on an object structure that closely resembles the structure of the documents it models. All right, and just in case you don't know, an API is an application programming interface. And it's set up this way really conveniently so that it can um, work with a wide range of languages. So you don't have to access the DOM with just JavaScript. You can use other languages as well. And again, here's the graphical representation of the HTML. Okay, here's another DOM tree. Now, the entire document here is a node. Every uh, HTML element is itself an element node such as the body, the anchor, the h1. Now, the text, even the text is going to be a um, uh, text node. And attributes are attribute nodes. And lastly, comments are comment nodes. So you see how really pretty much everything, or mostly everything, on an HTML, on, on a, in a browser is going to be part of that document object model. And you can change it, and you can adjust it and reference it with your JavaScript and cascading style sheets. Okay, so here's an example of, of, a, of a document object mode again, but just broken down to a really simple example. This is a paragraph, and this, this is a paragraph that's between the p tags, so the p tag is going to be its parent node. All right, so here's our parent node. But it also contains this, this text node, all right? So this is a paragraph, is a text node with a value of, this is a paragraph, and it is a child of the opening paragraph node. Okay, here's something that looks a little strange the way it is up here, but I have the address for, for where I got it from. This is a good resource, maybe a little bit outdated from the way that the code looked, but this is um, it still pertains. So here's an example of attribute nodes. And you all know about attributes if you've done any HTML. Here's an example of um, using the align right, which is depreciated, but it still works for this example. We have a paragraph node. And inside that paragraph node, it has a child of a text node. It has a child of a text node. And also, the bold tags are children of that paragraph. But also, there's uh, an alignment attribute node. So this lays this out. So here's the paragraph. It's the parent. It has a child of an align attribute node, and then the value that is right. Okay. Over here, this is probably a little bit out of place, but the paragraph has a child of a bold, 
And then uh, this is the word paragraph, this is a child of bold. Okay. Here's another uh, HTML page. Uh, in this case, the root node in the HTML above is HTML. Okay, so this is our top one. This is gonna be our root uh, node, our parent node. This is our first child head right here. This is our second child body right here. So head, body, both children of the HTML node. And then everything within the head and everything within the body is gonna be various children. Okay. As a note, I don't think I mentioned this, but H1 in this case and paragraph are actually siblings because they are both children of body. Now here's a question for you to think about. Which one of these is the first child? And which one of these is the second child? Because you have two of these and they're both siblings. So which one's the first and which one's the second child and why? Uh, which one's the last child? Okay, here's some various resources and I'm gonna go through and I'll show um, uh, working with Firefox and how you can use uh, the DOM inspector with Firefox.